directed energy deposition, or DED, is a form of metal additive manufacturing that follows a tool path like a CNC machine tool, sort of. There's no tool, there's a nozzle depositing metal, but the machine moves the nozzle through XYZ space in a path that's programmed like a machine tool. Hello, I'm Pete Zielinski with Additive Manufacturing Media, and this video is part of our occasional series on the role of software in advancing additive manufacturing. My guest is David Bourdage, product manager with OpenMind. OpenMind is a provider of Hypermill software for programming metal cutting machine tools. CAM software, um, but now with a version of the software for programming the moves of metal deposition. And one really interesting possibility here is additive turning. Spin the part and 3D print a form, cylindrical form, as it spins. So David, uh, to start, um, can you talk about the challenges of programming DED in general? How is this like programming CNC machining um, where metal is cut um, and how is it different? Uh, one thing that we have to care about is that we have to stay more or less to, to keep the nozzle more or less vertical when building certain kind of parts. And because here we are talking about a liquid melt pool compared to a tool, uh, to a milling tool. Also, another point which is really important is that when adding the material on an existing part or on an existing casting or anything, one important point is that the additive device should stay normal to the base surface to ensure a proper deposition. Also, we should also consider the deposition speed, uh, the speed at which the then the bead will move on the part. What I'd like you to ask you to do now is share your screen and in the span of just a couple minutes, give us a look at what it's like to program DED. And, and in fact, maybe show us additive turning, programming DED for an axial, some axially symmetric part. Yeah, I prepared two small examples to show you how it is because it's fairly simple to program this. So the way that we're working inside Hypermill is we broke this into separate process. So we have the definition of what we call a reference job, and then we are applying an additive manufacturing job over this. So the first part of this is what we call the three-axis simultaneous finishing, which is a, mainly a turning cycle that we're using for this. If here, you will see this is the part that we would like to build in this case, which is a rotational part, which has we will, would build on this case only one thickness, one bead thickness on this one. So therefore, I will just show you here, we have the contour profile of the part itself, which you can see it this way. And then we are selecting this path here. Sorry, here is my user interface. So we are selecting this contour here, and we are selecting here synchronization line to guide the tool vector. What will happen when calculating this? Is that we have a motion which is looking like this here. I will just move in this view because this is the easiest way to understand how this will work. As you can see here, the tool will move along the path and thanks to the vector that we gave, we are interpolating between these vectors along the time that we are moving in the space. This is important because when we are building something like this in additive, it's always important to point toward the previous, what we could call the previous path or the previous part which has been already built. Therefore, the motion will look like this. But this is a simply a 2D approach, a 2D view of what will happen later on. Then once we have this reference job, we are using it inside the additive manufacturing job. And what the additive manufacturing job will do is that thanks to some parameters that we're giving to the software, it will use this and generate a five axis path, which is following the geometry, turning around the part, and then generating the tool vector all around because most of the additive process uh, of the additive, let's say, machine are offering 
uh, are not offering the turning process itself. So you need to go through a five axis process to, to do it. And this is how we are doing this. Therefore, as you can see here, there is a bunch of vectors. It would be really hard to analyze this, but since we are starting by really a simple 2D process, then it's easy to analyze what will go on with a tool vector and then to go to the, uh, to the five axis of it. If you accept, I will go to another example, which is showing strength of the additive turning process, which is where it becomes really interesting. Because if you take a, a part like this one here, where you see here, we have a variable wall thickness. And this is where it becomes really interesting. So there you can generate here a path, which is looking something like this one here. Follow this path. And when applying exactly the same logic, here I've got some vectors to guide the tool orientation also. And if we are taking a look to what it is looking like, is that we will have something like this. So what will happen is along the path here where we have only a single bead, so a single thickness of wall, this is quite similar to the previous one, but where it becomes really interesting is that, sorry, I'm gonna go like this here. When we are coming in the thicker part, you can imagine that what we need to do here is that we move, need to move a kind of zigzag motion, but then also to make sure that we are always pointing to what was already built. And this is where it's really strong because then you can really have any type of rotational shape with different thickness and where the nozzle will always point right the right direction in order to be able to build this. You're making it clear how vital five axis motion capability is for the additive turning. In fact, it's more than only for the additive turning. This is more about additive turning we are speaking here. But what I have seen in majority of the case that I have seen, it's almost always five axis motion that we have to apply. Because think to anything so that you have to repair something. It's really rare, except for the demo part, so where they are building a simple, a simple block on, on a flat stock. So usually, you need to repair an edge. You need to uh, do something about uh, a 3D shape or something like this. You will always be in five axes. How far have you gotten with this, this mode of additive? Are, are, there, are there any potential parts or applications in which additive turning seems to offer a really promising way to, to generate the form that's needed? In fact, um, the project, itself started with a customer request as many projects are starting. So the customer wanted to move from a manufacturing process with sheet metal. So they, they had some uh, sheet metal made of a special alloy. They had to roll this, weld this together, grinding, polishing and all this. And you, you understand that there was a, quite a lot of manual work. It was really time consuming. And in fact, it has a really long lead time. So they turned to the, to the additive manufacturing process to replace their existing process. And so they started with a lead time for this middle sheet metal process of about four months to a lead time of a couple of weeks to do the same part. And here we are speaking about fairly large parts, so about a meter, a meter and a half, so three to four, five feet in diameter. So in addition, now they are able to build the part with very variable thickness wall and add other features such as flange uh, outside or inside the part. Have you been able to demonstrate the, the reliability of these parts? Is this, have, you, have you proven the part this way made, made this way is solid? In fact, in fact, we are working closely with the Oak Ridge National Lab to test different approaches, not only in the additive turning, but additive turning was tested also there. And recently they scanned the part uh, that they built using the additive turning on a Mazak hot wire laser machine. And they were really astonished about the quality of the build. So in the tested part, they achieve a porosity of 0.001%, so which is really not much. And in, in the past, they were able to achieve, so the, the lowest uh, porosity that they achieved before was 0.06%. So it's, it's a factor of six. So it's really something good. My assumption, 
is that this is due to the fact that we're building in the best condition. So we are staying normal to the shape. We, there's no start and stop, which is something really critical when we are speaking about porosity. And also the, the it's a continu, continu, continuous and smooth motion. All right, let's leave it at that. Programming technology developed and proven for machining, now advancing and extending the capabilities of metal 3D printing. David, thank you for joining me. Thank you very much, Pete, for your invitation. I appreciate it. And Pete Zielinski, learn much more about the technology of additive manufacturing for industrial production at additivemanufacturing.media.